Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Amy Dutton. Amy, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to have you on the show. I'm super excited to do uh, the work we're going to do. But before we talk about that, I want to talk about you. Um, for people who aren't familiar with your work, could you give us a little bit of a background? Yeah, sure. I'm a senior UI UX designer and front-end developer at Zeal, and it is a software consultancy based out of Southern Oregon. So I've been there full-time with them for the past two years, but I've worked with them for about five. Nice, nice. I didn't realize you were in, are you, are you in Southern Oregon? No, it's a remote team. So I'm actually ah. based out of Nashville, and nice. we just moved here from Chicago about a year ago. Nice. I got love- crazy. <laughs> You know, I've only been to Nashville once, but I had such a good time when I was there. Um, and it's, you know, I'm, I'm a, it used to be a musician. And so Nashville has like a special place in my heart is yes. everything is musical. And I remember when I went there, I walked into a taco shop and saw one of the best bands I've ever seen opening the second stage of the taco shop. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. The live music's fantastic. I think whenever I'm traveling, my favorite part is coming like into the Nashville airport and there's a live music in the airport and I don't listen to tons of country, but just that country music coming into the airport feels like home. Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a blast. Um, well, great. So today we're going to do something that's, um, a little different for for learn with Jason, but I actually think is really exciting and very relevant to um, what a lot of us are are. Honestly, it's going to be something that I think will help us out a lot, which is prototyping and specifically how we can use Framer for prototyping. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess the the first question I would ask is, when you're talking about prototyping, um, what do you kind of mean? What is what is prototyping for you? Yeah, so I'll kind of talk a little bit about the design process and that might Mm -hmm. help explain how prototyping fits into that and then the dev flow. But ultimately when I'm working on a project, I might design something out, say in Figma or Sketch, tools that you might be more familiar with on the design side. But then moving into Framer, that allows me to prototype it. So a lot of times when I'm presenting to say a client, it feels like a lot of smoke and mirrors, like imagine this happening and Some clients that's easy to do, and sometimes it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. So the benefit with prototyping and with Framer is I can show them what that looks like without having to necessarily do development work. So it's almost cheap because they can get a feel for how that user experience is going to look before we actually spend dev dollars and dev time actually building something out. Nice. Yeah. And I I really like that as a a general approach to, you know, I think, um, as an industry, we have a tendency to want to start everything by coding. And mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, what, what really demotivates me as a, a developer is when I, I have an idea and I think it's a good idea and then I immediately start coding it. And when I start coding it, I realize all the things I didn't consider. And then I realize I'm gonna have to right. undo all of my work and now I'm demotivated and I don't want to do it anymore. And, and then I like right. my, my idea dies. And so, right. so prototyping is a way that we can avoid that a little bit. It it gives us the ability to, yeah. Okay. So or even from, even from a developer standpoint, I know it's demotivating when you start on a story or a task and then all of a sudden the stakeholders come back and they're like, this isn't what I thought was going to happen. Can Mm. you rework this? And you're like, I just spent all this time coding this and now I'm going to have to refactor a lot of times prototyping helps take that out um, because they're able to experience it. And the cool part about Framer is you can actually put the app on your phone and interact it on it's in your phone as if oh, it's a real app. Oh, interesting. Okay, so so let's talk a little bit about Framer specifically. So is Framer, I, like I've heard Framer, I also were about to get drowned in boops here. Um, <laughs> so <Love> is, <laughs> is Framer a, uh, I've heard it talked about as a no code tool. And yeah, it, I guess I have a few questions. So, so maybe okay. the first one is when somebody. <laughs> I love this. Hello, hello, chat. Okay, so we just have to kind of get I up. Like, to I the feel topic. like I should be sw- swimming. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so when when somebody talks about no code, can you talk a little bit about what that just kind of what that means? Sure. 
Well, and I think there's several different approaches to sure. no code. So um, when I think no code, a lot of times I'm thinking, say, like Webflow, where you mm-hmm. can create something without using code, but you can get a website up. So in the case of Webflow, you're dragging and dropping components. You're using a WYSIWYG editor to style items. You're not actually having to pull up, say, VS Code and write out CSS and HTML and JavaScript and all those things. Um, but so Framer uses some of that and they've kind of moved more into that no code realm I feel like recently, mm-hmm. but the cool part that kind of made me fall in love with it is I can actually write custom react components and interact oh. with those within my design. So all of a sudden it's not just no code. There's also code and design. So I've, I've heard that referred to as low code. So, so what you're saying is you can, you can use custom react when you have something specific that you want to try, but you don't have to, you can do most right. of it without code. That's right. Fascinating. Okay. That's right. So that's, yep. that's really exciting. Um, yeah. And we'll kind of get into this a little bit more, but I actually had a conversation with a guy from Spotify and this is kind mm-hmm. of inspiring what we'll be working on later, but they actually have duplicated a majority of their code base from what I understand into framer components. Ooh, and they actually hook into the frame, the Spotify API when they're prototyping. So they're really? using a lot of the same elements and components that their developers are using, but in design. That's fascinating. I didn't even mm-hmm. consider that you could hook into the API. So, so mm-hmm. when they're prototyping their prototypes, they like work. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, wild. I mean, you can basically do that. And from the conversations that I've had with the framer team, they're trying to close that gap even more. So I think that that's eventually on the horizon where you could maybe even deploy, they haven't said that exactly, but maybe you could deploy an app from framer into say the iTunes store or whatever. Google play. Yeah. Sorry. Just, uh, no, just you're totally fine. clearing some nonsense from the chat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I, I think this is, uh, and maybe, maybe this is the best part to, uh, to just kind of switch it on over and, and get a sense of, of what we're actually doing. So let's sure. switch views here and head over to our pair programming view. Um, okay. And first and foremost, everyone, make sure that you go and follow Amy on Twitter. Um, yes. And you can uh, you can go check that out. So uh, make sure make sure you go give her a follow. Uh, lots of lots of good information there. And um, you go by self teach me. So do you also do? kind of educational content on your own? Yeah, trying to get more into that. So I have a YouTube channel called Self Teach Me and I talk about design and development there. Uh, There's a lot of front end stuff where we're building one off components. There's some React stuff as well. Uh, But yeah, it's been, I've been doing that for a little over a year and that's been a lot of fun. And then I'm also uh, collaborating with James Q Quick if you guys are familiar mm-hmm. with him and we're doing a podcast together called compressed FM and that launched about a month ago. Oh, so cool. Been, Very cool. Yeah, really fun. Is that where, where do we find that? You can go to compressed.fm. Okay. We'll make sure all of this shows up in the show notes, yes. drop links in here as well. Um, great. So, uh, also while we're talking about cool things, keep in mind that you can always watch the show with live captions. We've got uh, Rachel with us today helping us out. And that is at the homepage of learnwithjason.dev. Rachel's here from White Coat Captioning. And as always, they are uh, helping make the show a little more accessible. The captions are made possible through the support of our sponsors. Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura are all kicking in to help make the show more accessible to more people. It means a lot to me. Uh, as you're checking out the captions on the homepage, remember that you can go and click on these uh, to learn a little bit more about each of these generous sponsors. Um, and today we're going to be working with Framer. So let me go to Framer.com and let's talk a little bit about, oh goodness, we've got subs all over the place. So thank you very much to Spacecript for the sub. Thank you for designing Zeal, uh, gifting five subs. What up? Welcome to the Boop Crew, y'all. You can now uh, awesome. help Cassidy with her shenanigans. <laughs> um. But okay, so so Framer is promising 
like design how it works. And and I I like that as a as a thought because that that plays back to what you were saying about how you're not just giving someone a visual, you're giving someone an interaction. You're letting someone That's test right. out the the way something works. Um, That's right. This is really exciting. Okay. And let me clarify for anybody that's heard of Framer, there's Framer Motion and there's Framer. Mm -hmm. And the two are actually connected. Uh, I think you've had the Matthew Perry who mm -hmm. wrote uh, Framer Motion on your show before talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so that's like the open source coding side of things. And this is part of the engine underneath Framer that helps make all the interactions work. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to, if you want to watch that show, we have it on. Let's well, let's see. It's be here. Here it is. Frame or motion. Um, you can watch that episode here and get a sense of how the animations work under the hood. Yeah. Um, really, really cool stuff in, in this uh, this yeah. open source library. But uh, OK, so we have. We have Framer here, Framer.com, so you can check that out. And then you, ahead of time, set up a, a project for us that you invited me to. So I'm I'm in my Framer account now. And I yes. can see here that we've got a bunch of, uh, uh, I've got tutorials and smart components and things. But today I'm relying on you, so I'm not going to look at any of the resources. <laughs> I'm just going to scroll right down here to this project. And, and it really is an empty project. There's nothing there but a blank screen, so we're going to okay. have fun. All right, so I'm uh, I'm I'm actually really excited because I've never done any of this before. Um, I've, okay, I've been vaguely aware of Framer for a long time, but I've never had the chance to actually dig into it. So yeah, if I want to get so, started, all right, maybe we should talk about what we're going to yeah. do first. Yeah, so um, we're going to do a Spotify clone. So if you have Spotify in your phone, it should look similar to that. Okay, we're going to call it Boopify. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so we can do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we can just kind of start at the top and kind of work our way down. And we're going to also be using Airtable's API to bring in some data. Oh, interesting. Okay. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. I love so this. I, things. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I already feel like I underestimated Framer. I didn't even, <laughs> it didn't even occur to me that APIs were an option. Yeah. I see. I see that. Okay. Uh, Sorry about the dog. No, no worries. Uh, I, I see that we've upset them by underestimating Framer. Yes. Okay. So let's shoot. Actually, I'm going to let him out. Okay. No worries. Um, and while she's doing that, I'm going to poke at some of the buttons. Um, so let's see. We've got a layers. This looks familiar. It's very like Figma yes. Photoshop-y components. So let's do, yeah, let's create, um, we could start with design. Okay. But let's actually start with development because okay. I think that that's where a majority of your audience is going to be coming from. And the cool part is, I don't know if you can see my cursor. That's the other cool thing is there's... Wow. Here we go. Yeah. So you can see me in there too. So you can collaborate on stuff. Okay. So I'm just going to hang out in the corner and I'll let you drive. Okay. But if you click on... You don't have it in your view right now. If you go to... Let's see. I think it's under... Um, I'm trying to remember because I turned it on. You have to click on something in order to see their code tab. Oh, okay. Let's see. View, Let's see. show. So I was looking under. Pixel grid, day mode. Let's see. Tool. Do you have, you do have code down there. There you go. So if you go down to code, it's right above preferences. Almost oh, here. at the bottom. Yeah, there's an option to always show code. So if you click on that, that'll create a code tab on the left here. sidebar. Yep. And so now we can just click on create a code file. Okay. So that's one way to go about doing it. So let's just, um, if you have, I don't know if you use Spotify or not, but at the top of their app, they have this good morning welcome message because it's in the morning uh -huh. here at the top. So we're going to create that in code and we're going to change it so that it'll say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time of the day it is. Okay. So um, um, let's just call this like welcome message. And you, you do you it like a... That's right. Okay. Um, actually, their pattern, they usually use underscores and then the second word is lowercase. And then okay. they use TypeScript. Um, I mean, you can use as much or as little TypeScript in your file as you want. So yeah, if you do TSX. TSX. Yeah. Okay. So, so like that then? 
Uh, capital W. Got it. Oops. Yep. There we go. You're good. Okay. So it gives you some boilerplate code right off the bat. And I'll kind of talk through this just a little bit, give you an idea of what you're working with. Um, you have, you're importing react at the top. So that looks normal. Mm -hmm. And then that second line, um, they have import frame, add property, uh, add property controls, control type from framer. And so that's part of the framer library. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but the cool part is you can, when you create props, mm -hmm. when you have your design component, you can actually override that within their WYSIWYG tools. Cause it's really just props Ooh, that you're passing in. Yeah. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit. Um, and let me actually throw this in here a little bit more. When I was doing this with a client project, we were on a very tight dev timeline as most projects are. And so one of the things that one of the benefits was we had it so that I was creating react components and doing this front end work. And then I was able to hand that off to the developers. And so yeah. with just minimal refactoring, they were able to move a little bit faster. Yeah, that's that's really slick that it that it just kind of gives you just about everything. So now with this frame, like if I was going to take this out and move it somewhere else, I can I can just drop this into like a div or something and it it just works or. Yes. Yeah, so the way frame is essentially a div that you can put properties on um, and you can see that they're. Uh, it has a background size. There's a few attributes that they have built in, but everything that you do in Framer is wrapped inside a frame. Okay. Cool. So, um, so we've got some default props here. Uh, property controls. Now, this this is not a React thing. This is a Framer thing. That's right. And, and so this that's is what gives us you, overrides. That's right. And so, if you were to refactor this to actually pull into a project, this is one of the pieces that you would take out and. Uh, refactor. This is really so you can use it within their UI. Got it. Okay. Cool. So then, if so, we so if we want to do this, yeah. then I want. Let's start by taking out that. Usually, I'll take out that center frame right there. Yep. And all the text that you pull in with Framer is centered by default, so we want to wrap it with a span. So if you just start with a regular HTML span tag, and then um, let's pass in a prop called message, and that'll be. Or I guess not a prop, but a constant. Uh, like that? Would be a, yes, yes, that's curly brackets. Let me show you how to do this the design way, and then I'll show you how to do it the dynamic way. Okay. So um, when you're destructuring, let's add message to that list. Perfect. And then if you scroll down to the bottom where we had our have our add property controls, let's add message to that list as well. Okay. And that's going to be a type. And that's right. Let's see. We've got our control type and what are our that's options? Right. We So this is the great thing about using TypeScript. You can see there's a whole bunch of types that you can pull in. And if you go to their website and look at their API, you can look at the details for all those things. But we want a string. And the title is just going to be the label that we have access to in the sidebar. So you can add another item there. Perfect. And we can just call it message. So it all matches. Just call it message. Got it. Okay. Cool. So now if you click on your layers tab on the left, but on your sidebar. Do I need to add a default or anything? Uh, we can. Yeah, let's add one. Okay. So we'll say, yep, message. And it what is good morning is what it says in the. Sh th that's fine. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So then I can go back to my layers. That's right. Do I need to and hit save or anything on this or does it no, auto, -save? auto saves? Nice. It okay. auto saves. Yep. And so if you go to layers now on the left, you'll see under components, you have this component that you created it automatically appears. And so, yep, you can just drag and drop that onto the canvas uh -huh. and it says, good morning. Cool. That's super cool. Okay. So now yeah. I can, I can kind of set this up where it needs to be and it looks like I can resize things. That's right. Cool. All right. So if you scroll down on the right panel where you have this, um, kind of some of your WYSIWYG tools, you'll see there's a section there for message. Hey, and we hot wired that in. So you Look can change that. it and it will override. 
that is glorious so yeah we can we can go in and make changes and we've got um how do you do like i guess the size we didn't actually put in there right so we would have to make that a uh, that's prop right if we wanted to configure it or anything that well they have um built in width and height you can see that at the top mm -hmm. um and you can also a lot of the times i'll go ahead and add in the dimensions for width and height if i know what they are just so when i drop it in it's already the size that i want the component to be and you, you would to. do that in the code that's right i usually do that in the code nice and you just so you can see right there scroll up where it has your def defaults oh. yep you have a width right there so that's what the default is going to be nice so we can set this i think it was like 330 and then this is just a message so probably we can like call 45 it like or something 45 yeah. okay let's call it 45 and then and, when um, i come back while we're here, here actually okay. before you go back over let me come back if you scroll up you can i think oh, you don't have it here um you can add you can style just like you would within react by adding a style uh, object. Oh, okay. So then we can do like a font size and we'll make it, uh, That's right. I don't know, like 24. That should be big enough. Um, and then we can do a font weight of bold and that's probably good enough for now. Yep. So then when we come back out, hey, look at that. Uh, and yeah. if I drag a new one in, it'll be auto size now. That's yes. right. Look at it go. Yes. Look at you. Beautiful. Oh, and check that out. The, the overrides are individual, yep. so each one has its That's own. Right. That's really handy. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one that wasn't auto-sized, and I'm going to bring in the one that is. Cool. So that gives you an idea of how to do it with design, or I get kind of no code if you're mm -hmm. handing it off to somebody that didn't know code. So you could have a de developer come in and set up some of these components and then a designer that doesn't necessarily know code come in and modify and set up the overrides how they need to. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's make it more dynamic. So if you go back to the component itself, yep, in the code, and let's change this. So we're no longer gonna be passing in that prop, but let's set it to check for the time. And then based on the time, say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Okay. So we need to get the time. That's right. So and... this works just like normal React. Yep. Okay. So to do that, we're just, are we, do you want to use like a date object say, or do you want to pull yeah, a library? Yeah, we can just say new date. New date is great. Um, and then maybe below that, we can just say get hours on it. We won't worry about anything crazy. Okay. Um, so to get the hours, you can just say const hours equals um, date dot get hours. And let's wrap that in um, a number to cast it to a number, make sure that we're getting a the right thing. Okay. Perfect. And then let's just add, um, let's see. Or I guess it would be like a. Yep. We can do that. We can do that, uh, or we can say create a function called get message, whichever let's, way. We yeah, want. let's do that. Get message, and we can pass in the hours, and we'll say if uh, hours is is it twenty four hour time when you do get hours? Yes. Yes. So if it's less than, let's, let's see, where does it switch 12. to afternoon? Twelve. Uh, yes. Or we could say, I guess if it's less than twelve, it would be eleven. So let's do less than thirteen. Okay. And then else if hours is less than six, 18? Yes, 18. So that's um, before five. You can just say return good afternoon. And then our, have our else say uh, good evening. Okay. So then instead of using this, we'll get message hours and then we can drop this one out. That's right. And we'll clean this up as well. You can get rid of well. the, that's right. Okay. All right. So let's see what time it is. Should say good morning, just like it with yeah. the default, but that's working. <laughs> no, that's great. So then if we, um, and then if we like, change this a little bit so we could uh you know we could we could split this out a little bit and it should say 
good afternoon now. That's right. There it goes. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, this is like, this is great. I love, uh, I love that this kind of just works, um, yes. and doesn't have a whole lot of magic framer code. I'm just, you know, the vast majority of what we're doing here is writing JavaScript and that feels, uh, that's right. Yeah. That feels great. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's the other thing that was appealing to me about this is it's like, I know react and then jumping in didn't take a lot in, ter in terms of getting up to speed with Framer, really that section at the bottom that where we created that custom type is really the only custom Framer code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even this is uh, this is React even. That's right. Yeah, great. Um, and and can we get away with like defaults? Like if we destructure you hackers, you you dirty hackers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so if we did something like this. Like with the defaults like that, that works. They're not gonna like fight us on that, right? We can kind of do it whatever way That's we want. That's a good question. I'm not sure. You can try and see what happens. Yeah, let's try it with a, a different value here. So we're not really using the tint or anything anymore. So we can just call this test and we'll give it a test value. And I'm gonna stop destructuring props because we're not using it. And then we're going to also drop our test value in here. And let's Perfect. see what happens. Oh, I should probably stop trying to do defaults down here and we will instead have a test and it'll have string and then we can drop this on tap. Okay. That should and work. You know what I really liked about that is that it just gave us all the underline showing that we had like invalid things uh, yep. described. And let's see, my test value get it. is not showing up. Is it not okay. showing up because I did something wrong? No, let's see. Oh, it oh, doesn't. So it doesn't pick yeah, up those didn't defaults. Didn't reflect that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we, we do okay. need to use the default props to get the values to come through, but that's okay. So we can yeah. uh, we can put that back down here. Say welcome message dot default props, and then it would be test value, Perfect. and then we get a value. And if I delete this. It still doesn't do it. It what overrides. Over? Well, it over. It uh, did the override. I bet if you drag drag a new. Um, oh, like it'll. Yep. Oh, yeah, there you go. I understand. Okay, great, great, great. And then I just realized that I also deleted my uh, my default like width and height when width I did height, this. Yeah. Oh no! What have I done? Hmm. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So now we should have if I uh, if I bring one of these over. It's the right height and width. It's got those Perfect. default values. Good. All right, awesome. we're all happy. I'm gonna just Yay. go ahead and get rid of my test stuff so that we don't uh, that we don't lose it. Since we're not using the props at all now, I can drop those out. Right. Get rid of this one, and get rid of this one. Okay, everybody's happy. Cool. Okay, uh, so if we're just using, we're just ripping it off uh, the Spotify app. So let me show you another feature of Framer is there's a whole bunch of built-in components. So if you don't want to code your own, you can just pull in existing components they have. So there's an insert menu at the top with the plus button. And here you can just search for any component. So there's some that the Framer team has built that you can drop in. And there's also third-party components that you can drop in. So that's also a note. If you want to release your own components, you can create those and submit them. Oh, um, cool. So we're going to search for feather. It's just a icon component set. Yep. So we'll want to say you can hit return or click on the insert button to install it. And so you can see it dropped that little home icon and you'll also notice it's in the component section on the left now, in addition to our coded component. Mm hmm. Yep, so we can drag as many of those home buttons in as we want. And then we can also change the icon. So if you scroll down, yep, to where they have the uh, props, right? But keep scrolling Oh, here, down the name. Got yeah, it, got there it. you go. Yeah, so we can change the name. So I think there's one for gear. Gear. It might be settings. Maybe settings. it's settings. Yeah. Okay. So we have a gear icon and then we can duplicate that. Yeah. So you can change the color if you want to do that. 
Okay, yeah, let's make it, uh, I don't know, let's choose a, like a dark purple, get our, get our contrast there. That's right. And then you can also duplicate that and do one, um, for the, they have like a history button here for recently played. So I think there's, oh, sorry, the icon's called, uh, I think it's maybe rotate or circle. Can't remember. It's let's down see. towards the rotate. Okay, let's yeah, see. We go. want counterclockwise, right? That's right. Okay. So we got our two icons. Great. If you click on the gear icon again, and then click on color, you can save that color to a color palette. So you're not constantly having to go back and check it. So if you click there, there's a shared color. So you'll want to click on that plus button and then that'll make it easy to grab Ooh. next time. Okay. Nice. So then when I go here, that's right. I can just choose my dark purple and uh, perfect. That's okay. Right. That's great. Yep. Okay. Um, Let's see, let's create the next section and we'll, I'll show you how to set up the navigation in a minute once we get some more screens, but they have this grid at the top. Let me pull this up. We got a grid at the top of quick to find stuff. And then we also have a, um, this is a horizontal scroll mm -hmm. for mine says essential news podcasts. I'm sure it'll say different things for different people. So the first thing let's do, um, let's do this section at the top. Mm -hmm. And is there a component that'll do that? Like a not a drop in one. We can okay. go ahead and just create one ourselves. Okay. And do we want to do that do... with code or not code? Let's do it just with design first, because okay. I think that'll just to kind of set up these elements. So if you create, so let me kind of talk through the top bar a little bit, that'll help give some context. So moving left to right, you have a screen and that's just, if you have what this is, you have your dashboard and you can change the size of it so that this one is iPhone 12 mini, but you can also do a regular iPhone. You can also do a desktop. If you wanted to prototype on a desktop, um, there's several different options there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got all those options. And then we've got frames. That's right. So these are um, just like divs, if you want to think about it in terms of code. And then, so basically everything that you do will be wrapped with the div. And then we okay. have text. Yeah, so the text is what you'd think it is. And then scroll is a scrollable area. So you can either be horizontal, oh. vertical, or both. And you... What you would essentially do, and we'll do it in a minute when we have our horizontal scrolling element, is you set it up in your screen and then you connect it to content. So you'd say have another frame that you would connect it to. Okay. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do then is if I've, I've got this frame, then I want to create like our little element. Um, That's right. Like our card. Yeah. So That's perfect. About like that. And then inside right. of this, I need to do a shape. And well, we can go ahead and give it a background color um, okay. or we can stick with the light blue. Yeah, it's right there, fill. So if I take my dark purple, but then I want to change it a little bit. I think you'd have to go back to, yeah, choose custom. I think you're going to, yeah, you're, so right now this is fine, oh, but you're changing all of them. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so let's, uh, let's not do that. No, wait. So at the very bottom, it says choose custom. Uh, so oh, yeah, click it. on that okay. and then okay. choose custom. Yeah. Okay. So that should give us a, a nice, I guess we can make it even lighter since we're going to put text in it and stuff. Yep. All That's right. Perfect. And uh, let's drop an image in. So if you want to create another frame. Like inside of it. That's right. Perfect. Okay. And then I think you can just, um, under fill, you might be able to select an image to drop in. Fill yeah. image. Yep. Drop images. Let's see if I have anything in here. Um, I don't, let's go to unsplash and get this is always a good one. So we'll, Perfect. uh, we'll, drop in here. 
and then I go to image, fill, drop image. Perfect. We want to fill. That guy in. Good. Oh, there's already like an unsplash button. Oh, that's so much easier than what I just Perfect. did. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll be able to do that for the rest of them. Yes. Okay. And then you can grab a text element, which is at the top. And we can just type in our title. Okay. And are these like album names or I, I forget what's up there? It depends on, I think, what type of content it is. So I have in mine, I just have artists and then I have like my daily mix. Okay. There's another one that yeah, I think that's all that's in mine. Okay. So we probably want this to be a little bit smaller and um, that's, I forget exactly how this works, yeah, but we can. Yeah, you're right. You're totally okay. right. And now, now that I have this, this is so all. It's already in that frame, right? So let's give that frame a name so you can double click on it. I think to name it. Okay, um, so we'll call this like top card, like Perfect. this? Yes, that's right. Okay. And then we can also turn that into a component. So along the top, we have, I think it says, is that interaction and then component? If you're still moving across to the right, yep. So you can click on component and that will turn that item into a component. Oh, cool. Okay, so, so. Let's talk about this view for a second before we go back. You can create a hover state, which this is a phone, so you don't really need. I mean, I guess you could do a press state. And then to the right is a variant. So a variant would be if you wanted to modify it for any reason. So actually, when we get to the detail screen, there will create a follow button that will mm -hmm. toggle on and off. So in that case, we'll use a toggle, I mean, the variant to okay. show the different toggle states. And then do I need to... We don't need to do anything here. Well, actually, we can rename these items. So if you, yeah, scroll down on the right, it'll show you... Uh, where was this? I was hunting for this a minute ago. It's maybe if you double click on that item. I think I can... Oh, I know where it is. I think, yeah. I, so think, if you I, have just, the... I think I just did it. So I... Yeah, the you name found it is uh, yeah. So you can name each of these elements that you're working with, and this gives it a label in the sidebar. Okay. I'm I'm I don't feel like these are Perfect. correct, but we're gonna go with it. Yeah, you're good. Um, so then, so now if if you click on page, yeah, and the right there it has um, breadcrumbs oh. in the top area of your canvas. Yep. So now, if you scroll down on the right, yeah, you'll see. On the right, on your right sidebar, there's that top card and has those items that we set up. Beautiful. So you can override each of those. So, yep, drag another one on there and then you just change the content on the right side. Okay, so we'll daily mix and then I'll have to fix that. But we can go on splash and. Oh, that's so good. Okay, Perfect. so then if I if I click into this, so you want to edit it? Yeah, just double click on it. And there's a new feature that they actually released this week called Grow. Yep. So it's right here. where your cursor is. Yeah, we want it to grow vertically. Okay. And that should work if we go back. Hey, look at that beauty. Sweet. Okay, so then we can take these and pull them down. That's right. And let's see, we'll go to this one. And uh, what are what are some other ones that we want here? Like, uh, let's do podcasts. For podcasts. One. Okay. Okay. And then we can pick and... a couple more of these. Uh, and then for this one. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. That's sweet. <laughs> it's not perfect, but <laughs> it'll good. do. Yeah. And I think if you uh, resize it, that it'll automatically fill the way that it's supposed to. 
like resize, resize the the card. Yeah, I think so. But I, we might have. Yeah, I think we have it set to a fixed width. So you'd have to f set that within the. Um, yeah. If you um, you can actually expand this particular frame. In your... Oh, is it like relative? Or does that? Yeah, you could do relative. I think that might work. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens if I click that button. It like kind of yeah, worked. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it, that Perfect. mostly worked. Not not well, exactly we what we set, were looking for. We had it set to 30%. So if we increase the percentage that it was. Oh, I've got yeah. it. Okay. So let's maybe do, maybe we can just make this like, wait, why can't I make that bigger? There we go. So make this a little bit wider. Yeah. Make this a little bit wider. And yeah. then I think we can we can keep that fixed and that should solve Perfect. our problem. Yeah. Okay. So then we can problems. take this whole thing. <laughs> no problems remain. We are <laughs> we are done. Um okay. So that's, you know, that's uh, oops. Whoa. What have I done? Not that. Let's go here. Make these match a little bit. Perfect. Okay. I feel okay with that. That looks like, you know, yeah. we're, we're looking app-like. That's right. Okay, let's... Oh, yeah, so you can straighten those. There's um, alignment tools on the right side. If you select those oh, guys. Yeah. Ooh. So it automatically aligns. Beautiful. Yeah, that's cool. that's exactly what we want there. Good. Okay. okay. So let's add this next one that has horizontal scrolling. And this one, we're going to actually use the data component and hook into Airtable's API. Okay. So I need to go to code then, right? Um, well, actually, we can do all this with no code. Ooh, getting crazy, okay. Getting crazy. So you okay, said so data? The, yes. And Here. it's that top one. Yeah, data component. So we want to install that. Okay. Come on, there we go. Thinking about it, there we go. Data component. So, so then I'm can... gonna drag one of these out here. That's right. And so there's a few things on this card that'll tell you to do. Okay, let me make this smaller so I can actually see what's going on. Uh, using the connector on the canvas or the properties panel, connect your smart component. For every row in your data, this component will be rendered. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's over here. That's right. Or you have these, um, if you look as part of that frame, yeah, you get these little noodles that come out of that if you click and drag. Yeah, well, I, I love that these are called noodles. That is... I, well, I just made that up. I don't know if that's an <laughs> official term. I mean, it is, it's canon now on this show. We will never not call these noodles. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's that's fun, but we don't have... Like how we don't would, have anything yet. Yeah, how would how would we do that? Or I guess so I should ask you what what is the right way to connect in in yeah, the way you've got so it set up. Yeah, so there's there's two other things here. So I think it might be easier if we just do the two other things first. Okay. Because they'll require the least amount of work. The second one is to connect a loading state, and then mm -hmm. the third one is to connect an empty state. So if you go to the top and grab a new frame, we can create that loading state first. Okay. So I've got a new frame. Do mm -hmm. I just like draw this wherever? That's right. Okay. Yep. That's perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, well, we want to, yeah, we can oh, resize oh, it God. and then okay. we can add, uh, yes. So I think you should, yep. That's perfect. So then if we just add loading or if you wanted to do a spinner, I'm sure you could drop something in. There's also a component for a loading animation you could drop in. Yeah. I, I, I think to make sure we run, don't run out of time, I'm not going to design yeah. this much. You're good. Um, yeah, okay, so I've got this. Now, if I if I use a noodle to connect this, does it ask me what I want to connect it as? Yep. That's right. Oh! So it'll pop up and we want loading state. Wow, okay. So then I'm going to get another frame and I'm going to drop this in here and we're yep. going to say uh, this one will have some text that'll say... Can't find. <clears throat> None found because this is the empty state. Okay, and then we'll just make this all fit the way that we want it to. So centered, centered. Okay, then I'm going to click this Perfect. thing again. Let's get another noodle. Sweet. Empty state. Yep. And the cool thing about this component is it, if you scroll back over, it checked off the things that we've already done. Oh, cool. 
So, that's helpful. And that's just that particular one because that's a third party component. Um, okay, so let's create that piece that's going to duplicate. So we want to have another frame. So you kind of get the idea. A lot of these pieces start with frames. And then we want to drop another frame in for our image. Okay, and these are like kind of square. These are going right? to be a little bit, yeah, and they're going to be a little bit smaller because you're going to be able to fit three or four across. Okay, so let's do let's do like a hundred by a hundred as our size. Or actually, we need like a square album and then a name under it. That's right. That's right. Okay, so let's maybe do like one thirty. Okay, so I'll put a, a frame inside, and grab a unsplash picture. Okay, get our fill, go to image, um, and we're going to use Unsplash, and let's get, sure, tequila. This is going to be party music. Um, Perfect. And then, uh, for our text here, we can do, is it is it just like one line of text? It is just, um, yeah. Okay. So it's going to be the artist name or the album name or whatever. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. And is that everything that we need for this? Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. So let's go ahead and change the names of everything. Okay. And I'm going to give you specific name. Actually, let me send you this really quick. This is for Airtable. And that way you can see what we're looking at. Grab the link for this, copy, and I'll send this to you on Twitter. Okay. There you go. Okay, grab it here. There it is. Okay, so I have Copy link. I have the link. Perfect. So oh, if you that's open a Twitter that guy link. Hold up. on one second. Oh, did I hand you the wrong thing? No, no, just the Twitter shortener did the thing. Uh, All right, so that's here's right. here's our Airtable. Perfect. So a few of my favorite podcasts. <laughs> um, but you can see these columns are name, cover, and type. So this is what okay. we'd be pulling in. So we want the names of our props to match these column names. Uh, okay. Okay. So then when I come back over here, I want, so I need to make this yeah. into a component first, right? That's right. That's okay. right. And so we will call this um, cover card or something. That's and right. And then I want to rename this to be a uh, name. And this That's is right. going to be cover. That's Do we right. need something for the type? Uh, we can add it if you want to add a second line, but we can just leave, or we can skip that part. It doesn't matter. I mean, okay. but it operates the exact same way. Okay. Yeah, we can we can skip it. That's okay. And then do I do I add a noodle at this point? That's right. Okay. Let's add a noodle. And it will say we want this to be our list item. Okay. There perfect. we go. So it's pulling those in, but we don't have, yeah, we haven't hooked it up to an API yet. So here we have this data source and you can connect it to different things. You'll see right now it's set to API. You can also do a file, but we're going to pick Airtable. Slick. And the URL is just that API key. And I can show you where to, where you would go to grab it, but then I'll send you the actual thing. Sorry, which thing am I grabbing? Just this one? So... Well, we have to pass in the API key as well. So I was just going to pass you what that should be in order to work. But okay. I was going to show for anybody that's watching and curious where to grab that URL, where they would need to go. I just searched Airtable API and it came up with this page of all my bases. And then it just said, yeah, that's exactly what I clicked on. And so since I have bases actually on this page, it listed all of them out. And so I just clicked on the appropriate one. And it gave me the URL that I needed to grab. Okay. So let me do Airtable API again, and then we should get to the right place. That's so right. here's a list of all my things. That's right. Okay. Um, let's see. You don't have to one click into them if you don't want to. Yeah. I'm not sure if I have any that are, oh, here. It's, thanks. No, it's totally Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. These, are, <laughs> <laughs> these are just recipes. 
But so Perfect. then once we're in here, then you've got the show API key. That's right. Okay. And it also, um, if you scroll down, you'll get to some code on the right side. You should, oh, there you go. Where it'll say like, there's the URL right there. Um, like the sec that second example, it has that whole long URL and then it says your oh, API, with the API key. key. Got yeah, it. So you plug in your API key there. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually, you know what? I have access to this because it's, I can collaborate. So I yeah. can just plug in the URL. Perfect. And that way we thing. won't see your API key on here. So let me get out of, I guess I won't be able to I'll, see it. I'll, so, delete, yeah. I'll delete it. I'll delete it once this is over. But as soon as I hit hey, paste, look at that. I can see it on my hint. Yeah. So automatically plugged everything in. So that's, I mean, that's like so much easier than I, I, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was going to be harder. Um, I, I was like, we've yeah. got to optimize for time. We're going to run out of time. Um, okay. So then if I take these and just make these all about the same size and make this about the same size, uh, then we know that we've got all of these ready to rock. Um, so then the next part. So if you part, click on that right now, this is set to scroll vertically. We can set that to scroll horizontally. So if you scroll down on the sidebar. Uh, there's a few options here, so we can say, yep, we can keep that as true. There should also be an option. Yeah. A layout kind of towards the top right now. It's set to, you have to scroll up a little bit. Oh, here, Thank here, you. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Oh, cool. Okay. So then I can yeah. make this, let's make this one 130 pixels tall and Perfect. look at that. Okay. And so you then... can also set up padding in here too, which is pretty cool. So on the right, you can set the spacing in between each of those items. Nice. So you could, yeah, you can make that actually flesh with the, like the whole width of it and then just update the um, padding so that it's not. Oh, I understand. Okay. Yeah. So then so I if go. If you scroll down, uh, there's one right there for padding and there's also one for gap. So you can even set the gap in between each of those items. Okay. So let's do a gap. Nice. And then we can add a little bit of padding. Um, probably a little bit less on the gap. So that you can see that there's more to do. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. So let's um, preview this. Let's actually see how this works. So you can either click on the play button at the top is one way to get there. So we have our phone and now you can scrub. Yep. How cool is that perfect. that that we just yeah. got that working? I mean. I, I feel like this is one of those things that it gets, um, it's easy to say like, uh, it'll take me longer to, to mock this up than it would to just code it. And there is zero chance that that is true with what we've just done. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, if you think about it, if you are a designer on Spotify's team, the fact that you're actually working with live data, so and, it's not trying yeah. to patch stuff in, you can see exactly what it would look like. And I just shared a, I, I copied this link and just shared it. And I think y'all should be able to now try this. Like you should be able to actually see our, uh, our, our prototype and like, you yeah, know, it doesn't, so, doesn't do anything yet, but it's pretty cool that you can see this and scroll it. Well, um, and if actually, if you go up to the top and click on mobile, it's kind of the box. That's a QR code that you can just Ooh. hold up with your phone and scan. Okay, yeah. hold on. I'm going to do... I'm not sure if you... Let me double check. You might have to have the Framer app on your phone. Open in Safari. Let's see what just happened. It wants me to log in. I think it's going to make me use the app. Okay, it's... I'm going to have to do my password and stuff. I'm not going to do that on my phone. But um, but yeah, that's... I mean, this is really slick that that, that just works. Uh, mm -hmm. and so then we can put it on different devices. So had I done a mock-up on other devices, we'd be able to see that. That's right. And you can change how it's displayed. Like if you don't want the frame of the phone to be there, you just want it to be, yeah, you can change how that looks. Clay. Oh, one. that's cool. That's very cool. Okay. And you've got settings. If you wanted a hand in there, <laughs> you could add that. Nice. Huh, I love it. That's really funny. Okay. I like that. So then we close this back up and we can come back in here and we've got our, our mock-up and I yeah, like, so I really am it. kind of blown away by how fast this happened. Yeah. It's awesome. Right. 
let's add another page so you can okay. kind of get a feel for interactivity. So we okay. want to go to screen, screen at the top, and it should just automatically. Oh, yeah, we want mini iPhone 12 mini. Okay. And then Perfect. I can put that like down here. Yep, wherever you want. And for this one, uh, let's add, say, an album cover. So we just want a square. Okay. Perfect. Can I guess I should pull it down a little bit so the, the notch doesn't get us. And then we're right. going to do an image. And are you wanting to hook this up to like the the we could but let's i'll just keep it simple okay <laughs> so we can just grab a unsplash image for this okay the big we'll thing is i just want to show navigation and then i'll show you with the variant how to get that toggle button working got it okay so we have our our album cover um did you want some text or something sure And we can make this bigger. Let's make it, uh, I don't know, 36. And that seems good. Yeah. All right. We're happy. Yeah. Cool. Let's, uh, while we're here, let's create our follow button with our variant. So if you grab another frame at the top and drop it on that screen. Perfect. So let's add, let's take away the background. So if you go over to the right, take off the tint or yeah, the fill, and then we want to add a border. So that's right below it. Okay. You can just make that whatever color. These. Those are if you wanted to add. Oh, you want yeah, separate like individual ones. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oh, and then you can set a radius. Mm -hmm. So we'll make it very Spotify E by rounding it. Perfect. Okay. And let's add some text inside it. Okay. Can center that. Everybody want to watch me try to vertically center text by <laughs> eye? Close enough. Awesome. And then if you grab the frame for that big button. Make it a component, right? Yep, that's right. And that should shoot us into the component view. Okay. And then, yep, you want to click on the right side for variant. Okay. And it duplicated it. So now you can just select the frame and change, maybe give it a background color so it's inverted. Okay, we can use our dark Perfect. purple, and then we'll yes. set this to be white. Following. You can just, here. oh yeah, and then you can just type the text um, to say following, since you will, oh, you're nice. toggling yeah. it on or off, yeah. Oh wait, yes. Oops. Not sure if that'll change, the, that, that changed the first one too. No, okay, all right, so let me try that again. It might, um, maybe if you click on the variant um, in the left, like where it says variant two, I mean, you could go in and name all these um, up a little on the left, right there. Now you should be able to change it, I think, in the sidebar, in once you have your components. Uh, so if you, sorry, if you click variant two oh, I have on to the click left on sidebar, oh, I yeah, got it, I there got you it. go. Now did it just give you that as an option? I think, do we have to add oh, it first? I was wrong. You should, uh, let's see, I think you do it right there within the variant screen. Let's Title see. is follow. Quick. Right, so that should be there. And then I've got variant two. Um, let me see if this will. Nope. Where is that? Button text, that's right. Oh, I know what it is. Sorry. If you select that and then in the right sidebar, scroll down to where those props were. And then I think if you clear that out, so it says button text in purple, where it says content button text. If you click X, then it's no longer connected. Oh, as a I got it. I got it. 
Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. So now it'll, yeah, perfect. So then you can click on page one in your breadcrumbs and that'll take you out of that. And, um, oh, I messed up, sorry. Double click on the follow button again to go back into that component view. And you wanna grab that little lightning bolt to create a noodle and you wanna drag it over. Yep, so we wanna say on tap that it'll go to that next screen. Okay. Or that next button. And then do we wanna do the same thing the other way? That's right. That's Does right. it do that automatically? The, what do you mean? Or sorry, it, I saw like a, it looked like it was like routing to itself, but I think it. Oh, right. You just would drag it. Yeah. So there's okay. two ways to get to that interaction screen. You can either grab it from that lightning bolt, or if you have a frame connected at the very top of the right side panel, there's an interaction menu and you can choose a bunch of different stuff. Oh, I got it. Okay. Okay. Right. All right. Okay. So if you click on, see if you can click on that frame, the, the screen, sorry. Yep. And then there's a play button there. So you can click on that and it'll launch us into that preview and you should be able to, yeah, just click to toggle. Nice. Okay. That's really, it even looks nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have a little animation in there by default. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. And then if I Hello. want to hook these up, I'm going to take a guess. Oh wait, here's a question. Do I do I connect this one as like the on tap? For this particular component, you were right the first time. Okay. So we're just gonna grab the entire thing. Yep. And then grab the noodle. Yep. And say when you <clears> tap, <throat> we want it to be instant. <clears throat> and you can set it to push. So like there's several different things built in. I'll kind of, I can talk about them really quick. So magic is really cool. If you have the same element on both screens, it'll automatically animate. So you could set oh. it eventually if you had say the album in the list and you wanted to move it so it grows, you just say magic and it would automatically recognize that if it has the same name and animate between the two. That's cool. And then push is like the, the phone kind of like page That's right. thing. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and those are really the main ones that I use. I mean, you can. Okay. Let's tr let's try this so that we can are. see it happen. So the push one, you have the option to change which direction it's going. So with this one, it's uh, yeah, that's the correct one. Okay. So let's try that. And then if I come out here and I so I'll just play, mm -hmm. and then I click any of these. That's right. It goes over. And so you just want to add a back button to be yeah. able to navigate back, but you do the exact same thing. Okay, so then here, I come in and I can get a feather. That's right. And we'll set this to probably like arrow back or something. Yeah, there's a chevron left. Chevron left. Perfect. And then we'll make the color on that our dark purple. We'll get the text. Awesome. And say, Go back. Um, need to make that. Nope. Uh, need to make that dark purple Scroll as well. On. Yeah, perfect. Make that text a lot smaller. Okay, maybe not that small. There, that seems good. Okay, so now if we take this, we have to turn this into a component, right? Right, that's right. Well, you wanna grab the whole thing, so, yep, I think that'll work. Do the thing, let's go yep. back, button. It did, hooray. Yep, Okay. you're on top of it. Okay, so, so then we go then back to page one. Here. Yep, you should get a noodle. Interaction, mm -hmm. here, and then we would push the that's other right. way. That's right. Okay. So let's try that again. We go back, we go forward. We That's go right. back. <laughs> ah, I love it. I mean, like how cool is it that we're able to put this together this quickly? You know, I feel like right. that's a, a really strong kind of, it, it, it shows the value of this type of, of like rapid prototyping because mm -hmm. a lot of times I, I feel like Something that I've noticed is that a lot of times when we're developing, we think about particular states. We think about what, how do we get this thing on screen? But then when we start developing, we realize we had to move from like point A to point B to point C. 
and no one ever considered what point B was. And That's so right. showing these these interactions and like actually having to move through the app, we might realize like, okay, I clicked this. Oh wait, I don't have any way to go back. We, you know, like we just realized, oh crap, we have to add a go back button. Um, and then as soon as we realize that, now we go, oh well, we actually have to we have to design that. We need to figure out what that looks mm -hmm. like because we didn't really consider what that would do. Um, That's right. So I, yeah, a lot I love of that this. stuff comes out in the interact interactivity when you're actually manipulating and working with it versus just even with Figma having this static. Mm -hmm artboard, which I mean, I know Figma has created some prototyping tools, but they're not like this where you can create code and design. Yeah. I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I know we've talked about it a bunch, but the, the fact that we can pull in live data here, um, mm -hmm. and you know, if we, if we change this air table, it'll just update here. That is that's right. So dang cool. Um, mm -hmm. and I can just, I mean, I'm already kind of spinning on like all the ways that I could use this to unblock our design team to unblock our dev team to make sure that if somebody's got an idea we don't have to spend weeks prototyping it we can spend a day prototyping it and and That's really right. get through those interactions it's uh just so many cool things that we can do That's um, right. well and like i said if you are trying to hand it off to a dev team mm -hmm. you can even hand off those react components so they're further down the road than trying to co code these front end elements from scratch yeah. Uh, the question in the chat, is this compatible with React Native? Uh, that's a good question. I honestly, I have not done the conversion myself. I've just handed it off to another developer. Let's check. Uh, can I make real apps? Well, that, <laughs> that seems a little dismissive. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see. React project. I don't know. Um, the The answer I, is I don't know. Yeah. I'm seeing a, a comment in the chat that says no. Okay. Um, okay, so we have a very cool, like we've got a prototype, that prototype is pulling in real data. We've got the ability to, you know, simulate scrolling interactions. We've got these, these different states. We can show whether or not we're following or not following somebody. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to make sure we cover today? Yeah. I just highlight a few things in the components that you can pull in. If you look at the, um, insert menu, there's options there for say a bottom sheet, bottom sheet. Yes. So this is, you've probably seen it like with Google Maps, where if you click on something, that mm -hmm. window will fly up and you can kind of drag it wherever you want the placement to be and get it to hide. So there's tons of things here. The one that really blew me away that is not related to our Spotify app is there's one for a camera where you can even interact with the camera in your prototype. What? Yeah. So if you do that, it'll even trigger like your webcam or if you're on your phone, it'll trigger your uh, camera on your phone and kind of interact with it as if you pulled that up within the app. That's extremely cool. I see mm -hmm. some map box stuff here. That's right. Um, more, more camera things. This is, this is really, really cool. Uh, the, yeah. more questions in the chat are, um, Dom, when you're asking about the code, are you are you asking if you can just like see it right now? Because it's so this is the the welcome message that we coded up. Um, when we want to see the code for one of these other ones, are those? There is a handoff. I don't think it tells you everything that's in that particular component, but there is a handoff um, view. Um, okay, let me see How... if I can find it really quick. Code. Um, it says, if you're on the viewer of a project, the right panel of the framer interface will display an export handoff panel. Oh, handoff. Okay, so that's... So that just shows you the props, I think. It doesn't tell you everything, but it does kind of give you a... Okay, a, and then a, if I was using the desktop app, it. 
it looks like I can actually export using the, the desktop app here. So, um, but this is, yeah, I mean, this is pretty slick that, uh, that we can see, you know, that those basic pieces. And then if you, oh, and then, yeah. So, uh, Ashish in the, in the chat is saying that you can export the entire project and it'll work like a normal react mm -hmm. project. So there you go. if we do that, then we could, let's see, uh, you're, you're, and I have done, I actually have done that from the desktop app. I've exported it as HTML. Then I could just stick on Dropbox and hand mm, off to somebody. Nice. Nice. That's really cool. I mean, this is really handy stuff. Like I've, I've seen, I've seen the videos, right? I've seen the, the framer promo videos and they always look amazing. And you, it's the kind of thing that you look at and you go, nah, that's too good to be true. But then, <laughs> the, you know, seeing it in action, it's like, wow, okay. All right. I can actually see I can see this making its way into my my daily workflow and and you know mm -hmm. becoming a part of the way that we do projects. Yeah. Um so where would you recommend somebody goes if they want to dig into more of this? Like are there good resources for somebody who wants to give this a try? Yeah, so the framer site is great. It has some fantastic documentation. There's even a um you can link this up. I think a document for if you're a designer and just trying to learn React there's a guide on there that explains like react for designers, how to get started there. Uh, framer also has their own stream on YouTube. That's pretty good where they'll talk through different projects. And I'm part of the framer discord. Framer discord. Let's see, here's the community. So there's a link there. If you want to get into mm -hmm. it, um, you said they're on YouTube as well. That's right. And, I also just want to shout out to their support team or just their team in general. They have been so oh my goodness. responsive. <laughs> All right. Getting right into they, it. <laughs> they've been so incredibly responsive, responsive and helpful. Like anytime I've posted anything on Twitter, um, I've gone back and forth with some of their development team, talked to the founder, they're just all really, really great people. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's always such a good thing to hear, you know, like I, I feel like um, when you, when you get a chance to work with a company and the, the tool is good and also the people building the tool seem to genuinely care and they're, you know, they're really right. putting the effort in, you feel that in their support. I, that's one of my favorite things. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always going to, I'm always going to pull for the company that seems like they are genuinely invested in, in the success of their community yes. um, versus 100%. just trying to you know, do their thing and see how much money they can extract from the community. So that's right. yeah, that's, that's really, really cool. Um, follow up question is around, um, react is, is framer react only as far as I know. Yes. Okay, cool. The older versions of it used coffee script, but the mm. new version is all on react. Yeah. And I mean, it, like, this is one of those things that it feels like it's, you know, you, you make these trade-offs when you're building tools, because if you're prescriptive, you can be really creative uh, because mm -hmm. you, you control variables. If you try to be general purpose, then you leave a lot of that creativity in the hands of the people building the thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, that's a discussion to have with your team. Are you willing to make those trade-offs? Does this add enough productivity that it's worth adopting React and, and accepting those, uh, those guidelines? Um, what kind of project would you say this is recommended for? Like, is it, is it for building web apps only? Would you use it for building something else? Would you like use it for only prototypes and throw that away so that you could then like write the code in whatever language or how, what's, what's your general kind of take on this? Yeah, I think definitely prototypes and anytime, I don't know, to me, the biggest benefit with prototyping is always communication and trying mm -hmm. to explain something. A lot of times, especially with design, it's easier to communicate when you have something to show somebody than just asking them to envision or imagine. So this is great for showing somebody exactly what you have in mind so that they can experiment with it. And I think it would work great for whether that's a desktop app or a mobile app. I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I am very excited about this chat. What other questions do you have? Fire them off. Um, while you're doing that, I'm going to just start throwing links at you to go and follow Amy. Um, so make sure you go check out Amy on Twitter. Make sure you check out Amy on YouTube. Um, you have uh, compressed.fm, a new podcast with, you said James Q quick. 
That's right. Uh, anywhere else that you want people to go to uh, to follow you? That's perfect. Excellent. Those three things. And feel free to reach out to me on Twitter, especially if you start messing with Framer and have questions. I'm happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, use Twitter. I mean, Twitter is such a good... It's such a good resource for for genuinely connecting with people. Um, you know, that's that's where you and I met. That's where I've met the mm-hmm. vast majority of the people who have come on and, and taught on Learn with Jason. Um, it's been a huge networking resource for me. It's like I honestly responsible for probably a, a frightening uh, portion of my career. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, this I mean, this has been great. And And just to do a quick recap before we sign off. We were in the span of about an hour, I would say, able to mm-hmm. put together um, a prototype for a, a Spotify clone. So we got this intelligent component that is written with real code, and this checks the time and then returns a, 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 a greeting based on what time of day it is. Um, then we were able to quickly mock these up. We were able to use Unsplash so that I didn't have to download a bunch of photos, which uh, I think saved us a bunch of time because we saw how slow I was to do the first one manually. Then we set up this smart component that pulls in real data from Airtable. So we're pulling live data from Airtable. This uh, this one, nope, this one here. Yeah, we're pulling in this live data from Airtable and we've got loading screens, we've got uh, empty screens, and we've got these custom components, all of which override and have scrolling. When we click on those, we have an animated transition over to this full frame. We were able to design a button. That button has variants. Um, we, that just what a what a cool amount of work we were able to do in like no time. Um, and you just saw that there, the loading component just straight up worked. Like no, no, uh, no finagling or anything. We we load this and we see that loading component work. We click here, brings us over with a very native feeling animation. We can follow, we can go back, feel, it all feels very app-like. And we did that in under an hour. Um, so just a, a really incredible amount of work that we were able to do with very, I mean, you know, I don't know anything about Framer except what I've learned today. So mm-hmm. the fact that we were able to move this far this fast, I think is a, a very strong endorsement of the tool. Um, okay, so uh, Amy, we we've covered a bunch of tutorials we've we've shared the um the framer link so if y'all want to go learn more about that is there anything that we didn't cover today that you want to make sure that you say before we wrap it up um i don't think so i did see something fly by in the chat just comparing it to figma um, so I'll just say a quick note about that. Just comparing the two, I still use both in my workflow. I think Figma is great for design and you can actually import your Figma files into Framer. So oh. if that's where your workflow starts, you're not missing anything. The other, and I think you can maybe import other things as well. Yeah. Um, but I think somebody was asking about just the popularity of Figma versus Framer. And I think some of it is there's a little bit more of a learning curve with Framer. If you go the component, like the coded component route, which Mm. is probably why Figma is a little bit more popular and Framer has just started to move a little bit more into the no code realm, um, before it was a, a lot heavier on the code side. Okay. But yeah, I think that there's a place for both tools within your toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, I can see a lot of opportunities too for like some of what we were doing today was stuff that I would want to do in Figma, like designing those cards, but being right. able to pull in my card components and then fill those with data. That's that's right. That's pretty dang that's right. promising. Very, mm-hmm. very exciting stuff. Um, okay, well, with that, let's do a, a quick shout out to the sponsors. We've got um, we've got Rachel here from White Coat Captioning today, helping make sure this show is accessible as possible, doing the live captioning with us. She's here from White Coat Captioning, um, and that's made possible through our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Auth0, and Hasura. That, as always, is on the homepage of the site, uh, learnwithjason.dev. While you're over at learnwithjason.dev, make sure you go and check out the schedule. We have uh, some really good stuff coming up. We, I, I, My schedule's so out of date. I promise that there are going to be shows uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, um, but I got to get him up on the site. We've got Gregor from GitHub coming over. He's going to teach us about automation with OctaKit. There's some really, really cool stuff that you can do if you've never used OctaKit. It's a whole lot of fun, and uh, you can do some very exciting stuff. We're going to learn Kotlin. Um, that's going to be... 
I don't know anything about Kotlin, so that one's going to be really funny. Uh, Kotlin is uh, is like it's Java. It's it's all things that I don't use, so it's going to be really really fun. But it has a lot of potential for building uh, some really interesting stuff. Um, we're going to get into user defined functions in Fauna, which is kind of like right in Fauna's uh, like Fauna is a database, and you can actually do data customization right inside of it. Uh, I'm excited to learn. I've never tried it. Um, we're going to learn modern Redux. So, so Mark Erickson, Ace Mark on Twitter is going to come and teach us about what's new in Redux because Redux has been around for a long time. It has a bad reputation as being a lot of boilerplate, really kind of complicated and, and a lot going on, but there's been a ton of work done under the hood to make Redux more approachable. Redux toolkit and React Redux hooks are there to do that. And Mark's going to teach us all about it. Uh, Tomasz Lachemik is going to come on and teach us about TypeScript and how we can use those with serverless functions. Um, we're going to do better screen reader experiences with CSS with Ben Myers. Um, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. There's there's all this and a whole lot more coming on. I just need to get the, the thing updated. And if there's somebody you want to see on the show, please let me know. Uh, maybe maybe tweet at me and tell me who you would like to learn from. With that, Amy, thank you so, so much for hanging out with us today. Um, thank you. Any Any parting words for the chat? I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around, guys. And feel free to reach out to me. Absolutely. All right, chat. As always, thank you so much for hanging out. Stick around. We're going to go find somebody to raid. Amy, thank you very much. We will thank you. see you next time. <laughs>